They will continue to worry more about pronouns in bathrooms than the economy, than crime and suffering. And Americans, there's still a way to go. We knew this would be a tough fight. Saving a country can't and won't happen in one election cycle. Deep breaths, folks. America, we've got this. And let's bring in to weigh in is journalist and host of the Megyn Kelly Show. Megyn Kelly, good friend of mine as well. Megyn, um, so this whole, was there a wave, was there a tsunami? All I do know is there's going to be a lot of happy people that we're going to wake up one of these days. If it's not tomorrow, it's Friday or Monday and say, guess what? Nancy Pelosi is no longer going to be the Speaker of the House come January 20th. I mean, that's the thing, Eric. So it's like you can spend a lot of time looking your wounds about what, what might have been. But let's take a look at what appears to be. And that is the Biden presidency, for all intents and purposes, is done. His his legislative agenda is over. The GOP is going to stop and stymie everything he tries to shove down their throats now in a way that they only dreamed of being able to do for the past two years. Think of all that he's done. Think of the Inflation Reduction Act and how Build Back Better kept coming back in one form or another the crazy far left green agenda. The reason we're in this, as you know, inflationary spiral uh, for one of the main reasons is they're overspending. There was nobody there to stop it. And there was nobody there to really challenge it in any meaningful way. Maybe we'll finally find out how COVID started and prevent another pandemic if somebody actually looks into it like they'll do in the House. Maybe we'll find out what's happening along the southern border. Maybe we'll find out whether Joe and Hunter actually did commit some sort of fraud or other in inappropriate dealings in their overseas uh, excursions. I don't know, but I'd love to have answers. And a willing Congress is part of that equation. So that's all the good news as I see it. You, as soon as Republicans get done licking their wounds that they didn't get, you know, the 10, I think they're going to start to feel pretty good about the fact that they got, you know, the, the four or five. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, you bring these things up like, hey, did Hunter and Joe have any sort of business dealings that could be construed as collusion or illegal. And, and you, you're labeled with misinformation. The reason why I bring that up is because, Megan, I, you've been having a back and forth a little bit with the New York Times because you, when you talked about the Paul Pelosi, uh, whatever was going on out there, I mean, for God's sake, NBC reported that Paul Pelosi answered a, a door and, and, and they're citing San Francisco police. Paul Pelosi answers the door and says everything's fine. And then... He gets hit and he's injured, and you pointed that out. And some, for some reason, the New York Times says, "Oh, Megan, you're you're mis misinformation." Yeah, they, I spread misinformation in their view because I raised doubts that all facts were being disclosed by the SFPD. That's insane. The New York Times has lost its mind. It no longer recognizes what journalism is. We get paid to be skeptics. That's literally our business. It used to be cherished and revered and the people who work for the New York Times used to do it. How the, the question is not why am I raising doubts? The question is, why aren't they? Right. The police, by their own admission, were standing right there when this guy took out his hammer and attacked the 82 year old Speaker of the House's husband. Why didn't they do anything? Why weren't they more alarmed? Did they know it was the Speaker of the House? Is it true that he actually walked toward the attacker and away from the cops, as the NBC News report suggested? But then that report expired without any explanation. Uh, I have questions, and most people do. That doesn't make me a purveyor of misinformation. How dare they lump me in with those conspiracy theorists who raise questions about the guy's sexuality? I did nothing of the kind. I resent the implication, and the Times has disgraced itself yet again. Has NBC, though, Megan? I mean, they, they put this story out there. They pulled it back, citing not to our level of, of journalistic uh, standards, and they pull a story back that for all intent and pur uh, purposes, a asks the questions, opens up the door to the questions you want answered, not them yeah. closing the doors. And guess what? They found very different answers than were in the police's original story. To me, it sounded like the cops are trying to make themselves look better because I was not the only person saying they look like idiots. How did they show up at this house without their guns mm. drawn after they got a distress call from the Speaker of the House and lollygagged around long enough to let the guy hit him in the head with a hammer right in front of the cops? Now they clearly leaked to Miguel Almaguer at NBC. Hey, here's what really happened. He didn't say he was the husband of the Speaker. He opened the door himself. When we got there, he 
didn't rush into our arms. He turned and walked away toward the attacker. And by the way, they were in there for 22 minutes before we even got there, and we don't know what was going on. That's what Miguel's report said. Clearly, they got pressure to pull it. I would venture to guess it's from Pelosi's office. And somebody yeah. over there folded because that report was not pulled for any discernible reason other than, oh, we had second guesses about our source. I worked at NBC. I know what those Today Show reports go through before they hit the air. They have to go through standards and practices and a bunch of lawyers who go through it line by line to make sure that you're okay. Guarantee you that happened before the Miguel hit piece hit. It wasn't until after when something else happened that suddenly they had second second doubts and second guesses. And the real question, Eric, is where's the rest of the press? Yeah. Why isn't the rest of the press asking these, these questions? No one doubts the guy got attacked. The question is, what was wrong with SFPD in the moments before the attack that led them to be so lackadaisical? The press is afraid to be accused of homophobic uh, journalism by reporting something that, as you point out, no one's even commenting on what was going on. How about just tell us exactly why, why they were called and why it took so long for Paul Pelosi to say, hey, there's an intruder in here, and then he gets hit. 